back. Before we get started on the video, I wanted to just take a quick second to plug my Substack, which is my weekly newsletter. Every single Monday morning, you will get one email, one email only from me. And it's going to cover three topics concerning only podcasting. It's going to be something to think about where I break down a topic in the podcasting industry and expand on my my thoughts on it in written form, something to read where I find an article concerning the podcasting industry and give my thoughts as well. And you can read the full article there too. And then finally, something to watch, which is usually this video. So you'll get all of my content in you know, one weekly email right into your inbox. It's very easy and it's fun. I like to put you know pictures, graphs, really fun things. You'll love it. So you can check that out in the link below. But today's episode, I want to start a little bit of a mini series within this podcast, and it's going to be titled Four Producers. And this is going to be geared towards people that are in the same profession as me, where you're either a podcast producer, content producer, basically, you are the go to person for somebody who is the actual host of content. And the reason that something a role like this is important is because it makes a lot of these hosts lives easier. They're often not the most tech savvy. They have a great message. They just don't necessarily know how to get it out there. And so I sort of just spit out a bunch of my ideas on things that you as the producer need to be able to do or things that you need to know in order to make the host's life easier. And the more of these things that you know, and the better you are at them, the more successful you will be as a podcast producer. So the first thing is that you need to know how to get a podcast online. And that means being able to get somebody's show onto a hosting site like Libsyn, Cohost, Buzzsprout, Simplecast, any one of those hosting platforms, know the differences between a few of them, be really familiar with them and know how to get someone's podcast onto Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. And in the same vein as that, you need to be able to get somebody's podcast onto YouTube especially if it's audio only. There are a lot of people that are just not comfortable moving into the video podcasting space yet. However, YouTube is just such a major force in podcast consumption that the show needs to be there. And so if you're able to offer an audio only solution to go direct to YouTube and handle all of that for them, it makes you so much more valuable. You need to be familiar with remote podcasting software, things like Squadcast, Riverside, Zencaster, Skype, Zoom. Have familiarity with a few of these. You need to be able to, with ease, get your host on that platform, show them how to use it. And then additionally, you need to be able to put together a one sheet that they can send to guests of you click this link, make sure that you have headphones, make sure that you are using a microphone you know, that's the best case scenario that they're using a microphone, but make sure that they have a really strong internet connection. They have a good camera, essentially everything that they would need to totally break down for that guest, how they're able to easily get online, because something that you need to be able to help avoid is tech issues and headaches between the host, the guest and yourself. So they can just start recording their podcast right away. And if you're able to offer that to them, that makes you infinitely more valuable. Onto the actual back end and post production side of things, you need to be able to edit out mistakes. That's absolutely, you know, boilerplate skills that you need to have. You need to be able to cut out crutch words like um, uh, like. You need to be able to do it well. You need to hide them as if they were never there. And then the really bigger things that need to be edited out, whether that's someone takes a bathroom break, someone stumbles over their words, they need to restate an answer. Your host needs to be confident in you that you're able to remove those without them having to check over everything once, twice, three times. And then there's the back and forth of, oh, you need to edit this out. This sounds really choppy. You accidentally left this in there. If you're able to edit things out well, again, these are all things that make you much more valuable to the host. You need to also understand basic audio engineering, that's compression, leveling, understand what de-essers are, plosives, all of that sort of jargon that producers know, you need to know that as well. Because if you're able to offer a really clean audio sound for your host, that is really kind of the tip of the spear. If you're able to offer them a really high quality product, regardless of what they're recording with, that is what's going to set you apart from every other person that they could potentially work with. I know we mentioned being able to get your audio only podcast on YouTube, but if you can bring video editing skills to the table, just basic stuff. Again, this is what separates you from everybody else in terms of how many clients you can bring on and the types of work that you can do going forward. So understanding basic video editing, multi-cam editing, 
you need to be able to put captions on videos. The the TikTok kind of craze and these short form videos, they all need to have captions. And if you can't do that, there's so many other people that do know how to do that. And these are all really basic things that you can figure out how to do with just a little bit of effort. On to the more complex things, understanding what lower third cards are, people's names popping up on the screen, a subscribe ticker like you see in the corner here. On these videos, being able to do all of that and customize them, while it seems complex in the final product, they're actually really not that hard to put together. And if you can get that skill really nailed down, that's all the more that you can offer. You can make these videos look so much more professional. And, it, and again, it makes the entire product that you're putting out a lot higher quality. In terms of equipment, you need to have a pretty wide knowledge of basic audio and video equipment. I'm talking various different types of microphones, understanding the difference between USB microphones, XLR microphones, audio interfaces, how audio interfaces work, how to get them plugged into people's computers, how to be able to adjust settings on mixing boards and how those interact with remote uh, recording software, how to record into DAWs like Logic or GarageBand. Essentially, this ties into taking all of these things off of your host's plate so that you can really just sort of be the plug and play solution of you show up you know how everything works. All the host needs to focus on is the content that they're going to put out there. And again, a lot of this comes just from experience being, you know, trial and error, figuring it out on your own. And once you do get comfortable with various types of equipment, you can offer really customized solutions for people based on their budget, knowing how much things cost, knowing where to actually source these things. That's the next major thing is when someone comes to you and wants to start a podcast, you need to be able to actually get them set up for a high quality podcast out of the gate. So understanding that maybe the Samsung Q2U microphone isn't the best option for them. Maybe they need a Shure MV7. Maybe they're going to be doing only in-person podcasts. So a USB microphone isn't necessarily in their best interest. And now you need to understand what kind of recording equipment they need for all these in-person and interviews or podcasts that they're going to be doing. Finally, these are things that aren't necessarily, they aren't necessities, but they are nice to have things that again, just sort of set you apart from other producers out there. Uh, understanding basic WordPress, knowing how to put together a really simple website or knowing where to go to get a really good podcast website set up. If you can offer that, this makes you uh, even more valuable. You can do a lot more things for people when you can do sort of just basic website building basic social media marketing, what works, what doesn't, what social platforms are better for promoting podcasts, what social platforms don't really work for podcasts, and essentially how to help people grow their audience so they can grow their podcast. Again, this is not stuff that you have to be able to do, but as you go throughout this journey, these are the sort of things that you'll just learn to pick up along the way. That was basically everything that I wrote down in sort of a little five minute span of just vomiting things onto the paper. Um, Hopefully this is helpful. Again, a lot of these things are just skills that you pick up over time. Trial and error is going to be your best friend here. Just try different things, figure them out on your own. And you're going to learn pretty quickly that you need to have a passion for something like this in order to succeed at doing something like this. And if you look into this profession, you think that this is something that could be easy or it's easy money that you can just sort of do on the side, you're going to burn out pretty quickly. You need to really care about doing this and care about helping other people put out a really quality product. So I appreciate you tuning in. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing again, check out my sub stack in the link below and I'll see you next week.